I'm Alexa Edelman. I'm reading The Remarkable Farkle McBride. And this was a book I used to love to read to my daughter. She is grown up and not living in the house anymore, but the book is still here. This book was written by John Lithgow, as in, yes, the famous actor. It was illustrated by C.F. Payne. Here's a little picture of Farkle. Oh, pity the prodigy, Farkle McBride. No matter what instrument poor Farkle tried, whether strumming or blowing or drumming or bowing, his musical passions were unsatisfied. See Farkle? When Farkle McBride was a three-year-old tyke, all freckly, bony, and thin, he astonished his friends and his family alike by playing superb violin. Do you see him up top playing? It's only three. He went readily deedily deedily dee with all of the strings at his side. Readily deedily deedily dee the remarkable Farkle McBride. You see him playing in the string section of the orchestra. Oh no. But when he was four, Farkle played it no more. In spite of his parents beseeching, he shattered the records he used to adore. He smashed up his resin, ripped up every score. He threw fiddle and bow to the living room floor as he shouted, enough of your screeching. When Farkle was five, his melodical gift once again bore rhapsodical fruit. The woodwinds inspired his spirits to lift and he rapidly mastered the flute. He went to rootily tootily tootily too with all of the winds at his side. A rootily tootily tootily too, the remarkable Farkle McBride. You see him playing? He's playing with the woodwind section now. I should say woodwind. There they are. Uh-oh. Do you see this? But at six, Farkle flung his flute into the lake, notwithstanding its lyrical trill. He stamped on the dock till you think it would break. That's it, he exclaimed. I've had all I can take. That tootling gives me a brutal headache. It's so wimpy and whiny and shrill. When Farkle was seven, a different sound rekindled his musical flame. He became the most expert trombonist around and the boulevards buzzed with his name. He went a vroompity doompity doompity doom with all of the brass at his side. A vroompity doompity doompity doom, the remarkable Farkle McBride. There he is, and he's playing in what section? This is the brass section. But at eight, he declared to his parents' despair, and as everyone else might have guessed, I can't stand the trombone, the trombone with its blat and its blare. That racket is more than my eardrums can bear, so return it or throw it away. I don't care. I can't, I despise it, just like all the rest. When Farkle was nine, both his father and mom were bursting with pride and affection. For Farkle learned xylophone, cymbals, and drum, the entire percussionist section. He 
went. Boom, bash, clang a clash, all the clamor that he could provide. Tinkly bing bong, bumpity crash. The remarkable Sparkle McBride. Oh no. Oh. But soon he fell prey to his usual gloom. Despite all the praise and the flattery, first a sigh, then a sulk, then a frown, then a fume, then an ear-splitting tantrum that emptied the room. I can't take it, he bellowed, the crash and the boom and the clang and the bang of the battery. Poor Farkle at ten, howsoever renowned, reached the end of his musical tether. But then he discovered his favorite sound. <gasps> Musicians all playing together. It happened like this. The conductor caught cold on the day of a major recital. You've got to replace him, young Farkle was told. Your cooperation is vital. You see, there's a conductor, he has a cold. The conductor's the one who leads the whole orchestra. Oh, and look how worried everybody is. Oh, look how scared Farkle is. What happened? So he took the baton and he gave the downbeat. And kaboom! The foundations were shaken by glorious music, bombastic and sweet, that filled up the hall and spilled into the street. Music that brought the whole crowd to its feet from the instruments he had forsaken. They went riddly, rudely, rumpety bang. Bravo! All the uh, uh, spectators cried. Diddly doodly, doopity clang. The remarkable Farkle McBride. Since that sparkling night, Maestro Farkle McBride conducts all the instruments he ever tried. His happy heart sings to brass, drums, winds, and strings. And remarkable Farkles at last satisfied and you can see there's Farkle conducting the orchestra in the front and you see the entire orchestra and all the sections we have what do we have we've got strings we have some of the percussion including the harp which I didn't normally think was part of the percussion but it is we've got the timpani drums which are also percussion back here is that woodwind section with a flute piccolo we've got a brass section strings and i think that's the audience which is also part of the whole experience and here is the flowers his mom and dad gave him at the end of the show and the author so thanks for reading.